So here it is, my 1970 Honda CL350 that I just acquired. So I bought this Honda for the Skidmark 300. And the Community Motorcycle Garage here in Cleveland, Ohio is Skidmark Garage. And in the spirit of the Vintage 1000, the owner, Brian, wanted to put on an event. The way the Vintage 1000 works is it's 1,000 miles over a few days off-road on vintage motorcycles that are pre-1968. So Brian wanted to do an event very similar, but with looser constraints, just due to the difficulties of finding some of those old bikes. So for this one, he opened it up to anybody that was interested. So even if you had a modern adventure bike, we still let you in. But it was really geared towards vintage bikes and small vintage twin shock scramblers. So in the spirit of adventure, I acquired this thing. It doesn't run. The engine seems to be seized. The wheels barely turn on the thing. I'm sure the carbs are all clogged up. Uh, so I'm gonna get this thing running with as bare minimum as possible. And I'm gonna put as bare minimum of money as possible into this as well. And then we were going to see how it does for 300 miles off-road on the Skidmark 300 down in Southern Ohio. So as soon as I pulled the tank off, I saw there was a ton of rust and scale on the bottom of this tank. Uh, it was pretty obvious there was going to be some pinhole leaks. Even though looking down at it from the gas cap, um, it looked pretty solid and steelish up there. So, must have been some water sitting in the bottom of it. Maybe I need some gas. I don't know. Either way, it's leaking, so we're going to have to fix it. One of my tried and true techniques from driving beater cars while living here in the Rust Belt uh, was when you had a leaky gas tank, just take some JB Weld, knock the scale off of the uh, rust, and uh, drywall trowel some of that JB Weld up there. Now the important thing is, don't use the quick weld, don't use the pre-mix putty stick, whatever. Buy the old school stuff that takes like 24 hours to set up. Now this tank has been empty for quite a while, uh, so there was no gasoline fumes inside of it. If there was, you definitely would not want to use power tools and a wire wheel on the side of the gas tank, because that could turn into, at best, a citronella candle, at worst, uh, a big kaboom. Nobody wants that. Uh, then wire wheel or wire brush it all off, then smear that stuff up on there, um, and put a nice thick coat of it on there, and once it dries 24 hours later, it should be good probably for quite a few years. I've actually never had the JB Weld fail on me on a gas tank. However, most of those cars, I only drove them for a year or two. So once I got it up on the center stand, I was able to rock the wheel back and forth um, and I did actually get it to move some. The chain was really, really, really rusty on this thing. Now, any chain that's rusted so bad seized, it would be in the name of safety to replace that chain. But that's not what we're doing today. So, I got some blaster, or it used to be called PB blaster, um, and I sprayed it on there, and I worked the wheel back and forth, and then I sprayed it on some more, and I worked the wheel back and forth and sprayed it on a little bit more. That's it. It's moving now. We're not even at a chain loop. Just gonna send it. So it's a well-known fact that people love to argue over motor oil and which one works the best. So for this bike, I figured I would just scrape the bottom and I bought the cheapest conventional oil that they had at the local auto parts store. Is synthetic oil superior? Yes. Am I gonna use that in this bike? No. So good news, after bouncing up and down the Kickstarter a few times, I didn't have to take the engine apart. It came free. So, we're gonna put some oil in it and uh, send it. In hindsight, I should have bought the stuff from the dollar store. So I took the carburetors off the thing, cleaned them up, put them back on. I didn't bother including that video because it's a whole video series in itself. So stay tuned to my YouTube channel. If you hit subscribe, you'll see the one come up where I rebuild the carburetors off of this thing. So it runs. Runs really well, actually. So we just jumped right to the ride. Um, there is pretty severe intake leak going on it. You can hear it going... But other than that, man, it runs pretty well. The route that was selected for this ride was excellent. A good portion of the ride was well-maintained gravel roads, which made for some good back road cruising. There was also some technical sections that involved some ruts and a little bit of washouts and some of the large gravel and kind of that weird transition between gravel, sand, dirt, rock, pavement, back and forth. So it was fun, challenging, but it was nothing you couldn't handle on a twin shock bike. 
So one of the first things I noticed about riding this bike was the suspension was completely shot. Uh, every pothole I hit, uh, I could feel the back end creaking back and forth and I could actually hear it. <laughs> and uh, the front suspension was periodically bottoming out on the big bumps. Now there were some washed out road sections. Navigating these was a challenge to say the least. The CL even ended up on its side a few times and a few of those times it stayed running while on site. Intake leak still chirping away. Uh, at one point, I think we got lost. Uh, we were on some road that kept getting smaller and smaller and narrower and narrower, and we eventually got to an abandoned bridge. Uh, we crossed it, allegedly. Uh, we had to go one at a time because we weren't really sure of the decking surface, and we had to navigate some ride boards. Now, I will say we did all take our time walking this thing first and figuring out where the best route was to actually cross it and just send it. After I got home, I went over the bike, so it was actually safe to ride around town, unlike the way it was when I took it on the ride. Uh, it turns out the throttle cable was kinked, and randomly the carbs would not open at the same time because of this kink. So you could say the carbs were out of sync for this ride as well, which is really a testament to how amazing this bike is. However, by the end of the first day, I couldn't take it anymore on the non-existent suspension and the worn out seat. I should welt on the back of my legs from the seat pan. So even the low buck bike outlasted me on this ride. However, everyone else did the second half of the 300 mile ride. Uh, I joined their chase truck, uh, and we even had to help fix a few bikes along the way, so it was still a good time. Over the winter, I'm gonna rebuild the suspension and do a few maintenance items on it. Just essential stuff, of course. Then hit the gravel with it again next year. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep within the spear of this bike and spend as absolute minimum money on it as possible and do as absolute little maintenance to it as possible. Now, I did put two new tires on it. I bought the cheapest knobbies I could. Uh, I found them online. They're called Golden Boys. I've never heard of them, but they're on there. Oh, and of course, two new tubes and two new rim strips because you, you just got to. And uh, a bunch of cable lube down the cables so the brakes work. Yeah. Oh, and the container JB Weld and a can of BB Blaster. So all in all, 40 bucks. And uh, it was invincible. What do you need an adventure bike for? <laughs>